Hi there, this is Marhat Dad here again. In this video, I have to show you about the local forwarding on the Capsman. So if you look on the Capsman, and if you go to the data path, actually I have configured it from the configuration here. So if you go to the data path, you see that you have the local forwarding. So local forwarding, what does it mean here exactly? Let me show you exactly what does the for local forwarding means. So once, for example, you say that you have this Capsman over here and you say that uh, the data pass for this access point is local forwarding. When you say local forwarding, that you can still, from the Capsman, manage uh, the CAP, which is AP2 for the wireless. So you can do everything for the wireless, but for the internet, this uh, CAP will have somehow a connection to the internet then the internet will so if you have a user connected by his phone to the wireless over here so the traffic will not come anymore to the capsman to go to the internet so this will not happen anymore but the, the internet will be going from the cap directly so that means oh, this user will be connected to the internet from the cap directly so that's what is the local forwarding now someone can say but why do we need to do that can't we leave it to be from the Capsman? Ideally, yes, you can leave it to stay with the Capsman. But in some cases, you may need also that, for example, if you have a cap already connected to the internet, so yeah, why not to send the traffic for the internet from that cap? That's also possible. So I'm going to show you in this lab how this would work. So I'm going to show you how you can enable the local forwarding, and then I'm going to show you how you can configure the uh, cap to be able to allow those users to go to the internet. So this is what we're going to do. Now let's go to the configuration and stand over it. So if we look to the Capsman at this moment, I have already configured the Capsman and I have made the cap provision. So you can see inside the Capsman. So uh, this is uh, already provisioned, this one. And this one is the AP2, which you see it on the picture. Let me just put the picture for you so you can see it. So I will bring the picture and put it here so you can also see it. All right, so now if we go back to the Capsman, we see that uh, it is already uh, provisioned and uh, I have already configured uh, on the configuration file. I have configured here the uh, configuration file, which is named uh, CFG1. Um, I made SSID, which is wireless, and I have chosen one channel to use uh, N. Uh, the rate I didn't do anything and the data pass is to end to the internet from the bridge and of course I have put the security here which is one two three four five six seven eight now so anyone want to connect to this one has to put this password and uh, then what I've done I have just uh, uh, provisioned that uh, so you can see that uh, at this moment this uh, access point uh, which is I put anything so that means AP2 is one of them it has the configuration CFG1 which I have already configured and it has been here uh, provisioned so you can see that is the cap very good so this is uh, the cap that i have so now if i go to my phone and i open my phone and connect to the wireless so let me just uh, open my phone and connect to the wireless of uh, this one let me show you that over here so we go to the uh, wireless we have to go to the wi-fi Okay, I'm already connected to the Wi-Fi, but if you want, we can just forget the network and uh, try to connect again, wireless. And I put the password one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And I'm gonna say connect. And we shall see in a moment that uh, oh, here we go we are connected to the wireless so now the internet is going from the capsman because i made the data pass to go from the bridge on the capsman now i want to make it that the internet go from the cap all right so let me show you how you can do that so now what you need to do you have to go to the capsman and from this capsman you have to go to the cap that the one that we have configured all right inside the cap over here we can go to the data pass. Remember that what you see over here has the higher priority. So on under the cap, you have it has higher priority than the configuration, higher priority on the, from the data path. So over here, I go to that cap. I say that for this cap, 
I want the local forwarding to be enabled. All right, so now this one has now the local forwarding enabled. The second step that I need to do is to put internet on the cap. So now if we go to the phone again, let me just go to the phone. And from here, we try to connect to the wireless as we were before trying to connect. You see, it's connecting, but it never get connected. So you see, it will stay like that, never will be connected. Now I will go to the cap. And on the cap, the first thing that I need to do is to enable the internet on internet one, because internet one is the one which has the connection to the internet on the cap, which is AP2. So on Ethernet 1, there is a connection going to the internet. So I will enable the DHCP client on Ethernet 1. And here we go, it has received the uh, IP. Now that means this cap, if I try to ping to a.a.a.a, .a 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 .a, it is working. So this cap has internet from itself. Very good. Now, if we look to the wireless, so uh, if we go to the wireless, you see, that before the WLAN was disabled because the forwarding was from the Capsman. Now you see here you have local forwarding. So that means the traffic that the, um, the users are connected to that cap that will go from the internet from that cap. Of course, the wireless is still configured from the Capsman, but for the internet, it goes from here. So what we need to do now, first we have to put an IP on the wireless interface card. So let's put something like 172.0. 28.1.1 slash 24 and we put it inside WLAN 1. This is the IP. Then we have to give the DHCP server because anyone connected to that WLAN needs to get an IP address. So we make it DHCP setup on WLAN 1 and I'll say next, 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 next. Very good. Now the last thing that we need to do is to make the NAT. So IP and then we say here firewall and we make the NAT here. So we say that source NAT out of the interface Ethernet 1 action is to masquerade. And that's it. Now let's go back to the phone. So this is the phone now and look wireless was not able to get an IP. Now let's check now what's going to happen if we connect to the wireless. So I connect to the wireless now and it's connected and connected. Very good. So it's now connected to the internet. If we go inside of it and we see, look, he has received an IP 172.28.1.254. Very good. So local forwarding is working perfectly. Now still I can from the cap span control the frequencies. So and the security and all of those things. So if we go to the cap span now, I can still from here control uh, the, uh, if we go to the configuration, can still control the uh, wireless, the channel. I can control the rate, the security. But for the, uh, for, it's terminating now on the, not on the bridge because we have changed it over here. It is terminating now on the local forwarding. So that means the internet is terminating at that access point. So this is all what I wanted to show you in this lecture. I hope it was informative for you and I'll see you in the upcoming lecture.